She doesn't know where we're going. She doesn't know what we're looking for. Mantis, are we hot or cold? Room temperature. Okay, okay. It's not about her. It's about us. I am super proud of us. Because we've never gone this far for anything before. Oh, this is the one where you inspire them. <laughs> What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you my full review of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I mentioned the word full because the last time I talked about this particular project it was solely based on my impressions of the gameplay and for the most part my views haven't really changed on that. But since I now have access to the entire game we're going to explore everything this strange and bizarro galaxy has to offer. And go! First off, I want to thank the generous people over at Square Enix for granting me a free review copy of this title for the PlayStation 5. And if you were looking forward to loving or hating this review, I ask that you rate this video with a like or dislike. Yeah, I know it's a bit weird that I ask you to do this, but YouTube's algorithm sort of encourages it. So smash that like or dislike button for your boy. Anyways, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy has been floating around in an interesting place as of late, and I don't mean all the different worlds the team explores. I mean there seems to be a divide and somewhat reluctance to give this title a chance, which is understandable because his older brother in the other room kinda ruined the rollout for any future Marvel game releasing under the Square Enix umbrella. Not to mention that the overall presentation does leave a few boxes unchecked, particularly in the design department, but I can assure you that Eidos Montreal's ambition manages to shine through as soon as you pick up the controller. Something that I was fairly surprised with was how much the team dares to explore the more intricate details of the Guardians members, as opposed to playing it safe and riding the coattails of their cinematic counterpart which a lot of Marvel properties are guilty of doing nowadays. I think I speak for the comic book faithfuls when I say that this game is a love letter to the fans. Even though James Gunn is one of the best directors and scriptwriters within the MCU, he doesn't always scratch the itch of Guardians fans who want to see their favorite characters and all their abilities translated from the comics to the big screen. But thankfully, this game adds on a heavy layer of fateful lore icing to an already tasty cake. Take the Elemental Blasters for example, weapons that are directly tied to Star-Lord's Spartonian roots but for whatever reason are never really harped on in the mainstream media. I would argue that they're the most important aspect of the game's narrative as opposed to the Walkman that's been a core element in every recent iteration of the character. These things are the most unique tool that I think a lot of you guys are going to have fun with. You may remember I mentioned in my impressions video that this game is essentially an action role player and Star-Lord plays like a magic user of the team. Since his blasters are elemental based he can shoot out things like ice, electricity and wind, each of which add a splash of variety. What I love about them the most is that they force you to think fast and strategically about how you use them. Of course it's pretty self explanatory with how they affect enemies on the battlefield, but there are some very unique things that the devs do with them. For example, if you're using the wind element you can pull enemies in who are far off in a distance. And as you've seen in the gameplay trailers, depending on the type of enemies you face, you can freeze and dismantle them. Besides the combat, you can use the elemental blasters to help you overcome obstacle disadvantages. There might be a door that needs an electrical charge to get it to open. Or maybe there will be a huge water geyser that can be frozen to create a platform. You can tell there was a lot of thought put into Star-Lord's gameplay, which I know a lot of you are still a bit disappointed in since he's the only character that you get to play with, but I think that's the beauty of it all. I feel like Eidos Montreal sought out to put players in the driver's seat of the Milano to make you feel like you are Star-Lord. You're this earthling that's experiencing all these crazy things and going on these intergalactic voyages. They even give you first person perspectives to add even more emphasis to this element. One of the things that I appreciate the most is the dialogue between all the members of the Guardians. Since they literally come from different worlds, they're very dysfunctional. There are specific characters that don't even like each other. And since you're the leader, it's up to you to make the final decision. Without an engine, we're screwed Guys, anyway. guys, guys, guys! Enough! Just stop already! I can't hear myself think! But it's imperative that you choose wisely, because depending on the choices you make or who you show favor towards, it could lead to you rubbing the other members the wrong way. This is very much a game of consequences and anything you do or say can have you thinking twice before you execute them. There were times where I didn't want to upset Rocket Raccoon because I knew I needed him to hack into certain doors or squeeze into hard to reach places. It also helps that the characters are written so well that you just want to do your best to make all of them happy. Like your boy here is a people pleaser, so games like this keep me hot on my toes. Every second you're wondering what questions your team is going to ask you 
or what suggestions you should take that might have a negative impact on your other teammates, such as Drax's idea to use Rocket as an offering to a Lady Hellbender as opposed to using Groot. Usually in a lot of cases, too much dialogue can be a bad thing, but Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy doubles down on it in such a good way. There could be moments where you would casually be walking to a new location and the members will talk about the surroundings or discuss things that they're still mad at you about, and even then you'll have to respond to them with the right answer. Like I've never felt so obligated to keep both hands on a controller because a question could be asked at any moment. But with all of those aside, we gotta talk about the team's gameplay. As I mentioned in the impressions video, this concept works quite well. You hold the left bumper and press a face button that represents each respective member. Just like the elemental blasters, the team is something that you're going to want to utilize as effectively as possible. Each member obviously has things that sets them apart from the next. Gamora is swift and powerful and can jump very high. Rocket and Groot have a lot of moves that allow for crowd control, and Drax pretty much just destroys things in his path. The commands are very responsive, so even though you're not necessarily playing with them, you still feel like you have complete control of them. And I gotta admit that at first it felt a little chaotic trying to remember who does what or which button is linked to them. But once I got the hang of the mechanics, it felt like I was orchestrating a concerto of carnage. I'd say the biggest issue I have with the command layout is that I occasionally felt like my fingers were playing a game of Twister. There would be times where I would accidentally activate the wrong move. Like I'm not gonna lie to you guys, for active NPCs, the other Guardians members boast a wide variety of moves. Holding the left shoulder button and pressing the face button is only the beginning of what you have to do. Once you press the face button to select the character, you then have to press a face button again to pick the move that you want them to pull off. All the while you're still holding the left shoulder button. So depending on your hand size or the controller you have, you're probably going to get finger cramps and feel the side effects of your experience the next day. There's also Star-Lord's special move set, which ultimately had to be mapped to the L3 button since all the other buttons were occupied by the rest of the Guardians. And if you're a devout gamer like I am, then you know that it can be a bit cumbersome pressing the analog stick down since you already have to use it to move around. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, this game is all about momentum, so if you keep the consistency going in terms of kills, you can build up your special meter and execute a mechanic called the huddle, which is a very useful mechanic to have. Guys, huddle up! This game can be very challenging in the difficulty department, and things aren't always going to go your way when you're fighting those space monsters. So sometimes you gotta give your team a little pep talk. Once again, this is another example where you can tell that the developers really focused on the relationship of the Guardians and making sure the players make the right decision. During this fourth wall breaking experience, the game will do as the name suggests and huddle to let you know how they feel. It's up to you to listen closely and pick the right dialogue option to inspire them. So say for example, your team is feeling a little fearful about the battle. You'll have to reassure them that they can win. Or there may be times where you're winning and the team will say the enemy sucks so bad that they could beat them alone. You'll have to select an option that reminds them that you're a team and that you shouldn't get too cocky. Feel my rock. Nice one, Peter. If you select the right answer, your team's health will fully replenish and you can receive buffs such as faster cooldown times for special moves. But if you get it wrong, Star-Lord will get the buffs while everyone else remains unhappy. Once you head back out to the battlefield, different music from the walking will play that goes extremely well with the scenarios. I also gotta give the devs a shout out for the overall presentation. Because as you can see, the game is brimming with colors. Like the trailers don't do it justice, especially since YouTube compresses the hell out of videos and holds back the true graphical quality. I mean, yeah, there are still a few design choices that I question, but the concept artists did an exceptional job creating their version of the Guardians in their universe. I'd say the alien creature designs and levels are arguably the high watermark for this title. When the game was first revealed, I was expecting it to be one of those superhero titles that doesn't really boast any minute details in the way characters walk or interact with certain environments. You know, something you see in something like Uncharted 4 or the more recent Marvel Spider-Man games. But Eidos actually put effort into making everything feel real as opposed to arcadey. There are a few set pieces that feature Star-Lord as a kid that look like something from a movie, and I'm not sure if they scanned up any actual face models, but the characters emote exceptionally well. There just seems to be an impressive amount of detail that makes this game stand out as a high budget title. With that said though, I think the campaign tended to drag on a little longer than I would have liked, and this is mainly in response to the gameplay. 
While I was relatively high on how the characters played, I noticed that there wasn't anything else going for it outside of that being a third person shooter where you give certain commands. I would have liked if Eidos Montreal took a little more time to add in certain boss fights that felt very immersive and had me on the edge of my seat. But for the most part, I just found myself doing the same thing such as shooting and commanding my team to perform moves, leaving certain encounters feeling fairly similar to the next one. To make matters worse, there aren't any epic finishers. The only finishers you do see are these tacked on animations that play at random and usually end with Peter performing the most underwhelming attack that has little to no impact. It's like the game could use a little more spectacle to give it more oomph. You know, something more akin to the battle between Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus from Marvel Spider-Man where you see this fight transition in the most cinematic way possible, but you're still in complete control of it all. Like there was just one boss battle that I felt like it was going somewhere, but it was briefly interrupted since it led into a story cutscene, and you never get to see how that fight fully plays out. So if you're a person like me who's expecting a little more in terms of your boss battles, then your mileage may vary with all the shooting you're going to be doing. I'd also like to point out that the puzzle solving and using the team to access certain points becomes a bit cumbersome since they're very rinse and repeat. All of those cons the game bears made me want to get to the conclusion of the campaign. Like I'm all for lengthy experiences, but if I'm working with a gameplay system and missions that don't feel any different from the next, then I'm eventually going to get burnt out. Luckily, the story was good enough to motivate me to continue and see the game through. All in all, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is a solid title that features mechanics that work surprisingly well. The visual aesthetic takes full advantage of the next-gen hardware, and the voice acting is top-notch, but the execution is a little lacking in certain areas that prevent it from being great. That's why I'm giving it a 7.9 out of 10. Yeah! That's what I call a win, people! How's that a win? If you're a fan of the Guardians, I highly recommend picking this game up. And if you're not necessarily a stickler for epic boss battles like I am, then definitely by all means pick it up. It's undeserving of all the hate it's gotten based simply off the fact that it's associated with a publisher that released a game that didn't come through on its promises. So give it a chance. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. If you already pre-ordered the game, did this review add to your excitement to play it? And if you're someone who's been reluctant to buy it, let me know if this review motivated you to go through with the purchase. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my future videos. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.